Carriage versus BIR GR number 213446 July 3 2018 So this is um a consolidated uh, petition Facts of the case um CIR issued RMO number 232014 in order to clarify and consolidate the responsibilities of the public sector to withhold taxes on its transactions as a customer and as an employer under the National Internal Revenue Code of 1997 as amended and other special laws. So the GR number 213446, um, Confederation for Unity, Recognition, and Advancement of Government Employees, or um, in for short, is called Courage, imputes grave abuse of discretion on the part of CIR in issuing RMO number 23-2014 as it classified as taxable compensation the allowances, bonuses, compensation for services granted to government employees which they allege to be considered by law as non-taxable fringe and de minimis benefits. It also asserts that imposition of withholding tax on these allowances, bonuses, and benefits, which have been allotted by the government to its employees free of tax for a long time, violates the prohibition on non diminution of benefits under Article 100 of Labor Code and infringes the fiscal autonomy of the legislature, judiciary, constitutional commissions, and office of the ombudsman granted by the Constitution. The other case, which is GR number 213658, here Armando Yanga, the president of the Regional Trial Court Judges Association of Manila, and Maria Cristina Carmela Japzon, president of the Philippine Association of Court Employees, Manila Chapter, seeks to nullify RMO number 232014. On the following grounds, number one, CIR is bereft of any authority to issue the assailed RMO. And number two, CIR committed grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction by subjecting to withholding tax the benefits and allowances of court employees which are tax exempt. Petitioners further asserts that it violates their right to due process of law. So, in sum, the petitioners argue that, um, number one, 20, RMO 23-2014 is ultra viris, insofar as sections 3 and 4 of RMO 23-2014 for subjecting to withholding taxes, non-taxable allowances, bonuses, and benefits received by government employees. Letter B, section 6 and 7 for defining new offenses and prescribing penalties, therefore, particularly upon government officials. Number two, RMO number 23-2014 violates the Equal Protection Clause as it discriminates against em government employees. And number three, RMO number 23-2014 violates fiscal autonomy enjoyed by the government agencies. The implementation of RMO number 23-2014 results in diminution of benefits of government employees, a violation of Article 100 of the Labor Code, and number 5, respondents may be compelled through a writ of mandamus to increase the tax-exempt ceiling for 13-month pay and other benefits. On the other hand, the respondents um, counter that the instant consolidated petitions are barred by the doctrine of hierarchy of courts and that the CIR did not abuse its discretion in the issuance of RMO number 23-2014 because A. It was issued pursuant to CIR's power to interpret the NIRC of 1997 as amended B. RMO number 23-2014 does not discriminate against government employees. It does not create a new category of taxable income nor make taxable those which are exempt. C. It does not result in diminution of benefits. D. The allowances, bon bonuses, or benefits listed under Section 3 of the assailed RMO are not fringe benefits. 
E, the fiscal autonomy granted by the Constitution does not include tax exemption. And Bandamos does not lie against respondents because the NIRC of 1997 as amended does not impose a mandatory duty upon them to increase the tax-exempt ceiling for the 13th month pay and other benefits. Now, what is the issue of this case? The issue is whether or not Sections 3 and 4 of the assailed RMO 23-2014 are valid. The ruling of the court is that, yes, Sections 3 and 4 of RMO number 23-2014 are valid. Compensation income is the income of the individual taxpayer arising from services rendered pursuant to an employer-employee relationship. Under the NIRC of 1997 as amended, every form of compensation for services whether paid in cash or in kind is generally subject to income tax and consequently to withholding tax. The name designated to the compensation income received by an employee is immaterial. Thus, salaries, wages, emoluments, and honoraria, allowances, commissions, fees, bonuses, fringe benefits, pensions, retirement pay, and other income of a similar nature constitute compensation income that are taxable and subject to withholding tax. The law is clear that withholding tax and compensation applies to the government of the Philippines, including its agencies, instrumentalities, and political subdivisions. The government as an employer is constituted as the withholding agent, mandated to deduct, withhold, and remit the corresponding tax on compensation income paid to all its employees. The court finds Section 3 and 4 of the assailed RMO valid. The NIRC of 1997 as amended is clear that all forms of compensation income received by the employee from his employer are presumed taxable and subject to withholding taxes. The government of the Philippines, its agencies, instrumentalities, and political subdivisions as an employer is required by law to withhold and remit to the BIR the appropriate taxes due thereon. Any claims of exemption from withholding taxes by an employee, as in the case of petitioners, must be brought and resolved in the appropriate administrative and judicial proceeding, with the employee having the burden to prove the factual and legal basis thereof. The petition in this case uh, was partially granted. Sections um, 3, 4, and also 8 of RMO number 23, 2014 were declared valid inasmuch as they merely mirrored the provisions of the NIRC of 1997 as amended. However, the court cannot rule on petitioners' claims of exemption from withholding tax on compensation income because this involves issues that are essentially factual or evidentiary in nature, which must be raised in the appropriate administrative or judicial proceeding. The court's decision upholding the validity of sections 3 and 4 of the assailed RMO is to be applied only prospectively. However, section 6 of the RMO is declared null and void insofar as it names the governor, city mayor, municipal mayor, barangay captain, and heads of office in government agencies, government-owned or controlled corporations, and other government offices as persons required to withhold and remit withholding taxes.